All right, so let's touch on this right here. This is going to be just a brief, um, just addressing some of the the overt points that this article brought to mind when I came across it earlier today. I shared it on the WhatsApp, some of my WhatsApp platforms, ones and ones I see to WhatsApp, I and I will share out a more direct WhatsApp number. So if you're on the WhatsApp, we can fellowship, can reason, you know, in group and maybe even some one-on-one -on -one kind of discussions. Ones have certain interesting perspectives, points of views, comments, commentaries, and even critiques. But here we want to call this one slavery or pseudo-slaves, question mark. Slavery versus pseudo-slaves. People say pseudo. Did, did he say pseudo? Yeah, we say pseudo-slaves. What do we mean by pseudo-slaves? It's like coming from the perspective of my people, right? The once lost, now found, black and brown, sheep full of the Bites, Yisrael, the Beta Israel, the Bites, Yisrael here in the Americas and the Caribbean. In fact, we're all black Americans now, right? The Americas, North America, South America, and even the Caribbean, the Caribbean, Caribbean, the Ethiopian Ocean, right? That trans-Ethiopian Ocean slave trade. Well, I caught this because on my Google, it basically, you know, they do this thing where they, um, with the algorithms, what you search, you know, they try to like appeal to your interests. Okay, so this came up. This article here, Global Development, right? If you had money, you had slaves. How Ethiopia is in denial about injustices of the past. Okay. Now, I don't know if you checked out this article or not. I will definitely recommend, you know, ones and ones check it out for themselves right here. Not to go through uh, kind of a critique or into the details of it, but just a couple of things that at, at the outset, you know, came forward. First thing I said, I said, wow, look at this. Everyone is trying to say that they were slaves, right? Everyone uses the term slavery, and there's all kind of slavery. Now there's like, you know, sex slavery, there's this slavery and that slavery and all kind of, you know, it's almost like somebody stole my money. I say to you, yo, you stole my money. Give me my money. Yo, give me my money back, right? And you say, well, everybody stole. Everybody steals. You know, a lot of people have stolen money. So from so on, this person stole money from that person. It's like they are trying to trivialize right, the money right, that they stole from me, trying to make this a kind of like a point like a everybody, you know, everybody did something wrong. You, you ever do that to somebody? They try to criticize you and you make this kind of generalities kind of point to say, well, generally it happens to everybody. It's no, it's no really biggie. This is what's going on nowadays. You know, especially with us as black people, especially here in these here Americas. When I say the Americas, cuz, right? I'm talking about North America, right? That includes Canada as well. We're talking about the continent, right? This region of the world, right? Especially when you know who we are as a people, right? The once lost, now found, the beta Israel. We beta Israel. We Hebrews, Israelites over here, Ethiopian Hebrews here in this North country. So when I saw this particular article right here. I said, okay, this is interesting. What's it talking about? But the title, just look at the title for a moment. So I had to scroll through the article and you know who um, Global Development, right, is supported by, I want, I want to share this. Did this come up? Yeah, supported by, you don't see the rest of it right there, but if you go to the page itself, it says that this Global Development, this is The Guardian, this particular um yeah you can see right there the guardian right news website of the year blah 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 right but down here global development it is supported by bill and melinda gates foundation <laughs> let that let that sink in for a moment because like why did they write this article like this quote if you had money you had slaves end quote colon how ethiopia is in denial about injustices of the past hmm i say well how ethiopia really isn't when i read the article i had to say what how ethiopia is in denial 
about the the Arab slave trade. The Arab slave trade. Now, I'd like to put that in the title. Maybe they might try to shadow ban it, you know, put it under these algorithms and so forth and so on, mess up our algorithm. I don't know. But it has to be addressed, right? Maybe somebody will get it and somebody will be able to, you know, pass it forward, right? But how Ethiopia really is in denial about the Arab slave trade. A lot of folks, even us folks over here in the America, because we talk about, okay, what the so-called Anglo-American white man, you know, the Anglo-American England and America white man have done to black people. We could say African today, African peoples, we black people, we Hebrew is like what they did to us, right? And how that was one of the most inhuman um it was our own black holocaust. People don't like when we talk like that, like some of the other the other Jews. The other Jews don't like that. You know, they because for them, th their holocaust is the only holocaust. And so for us, right, we as black people over this 400-year period of time here in the Americas and the Caribbean, what we went through, right, that is slavery. And even on the books, you see a lot of history is being rewritten. They're even trying to say that, you know, our people came over here because they couldn't find employment in Africa. So they came over here looking for food or they came over here looking for work. This is actually what they are writing in the history books today for the little, the little baby and the children. What they're trying to teach them today about the past, about the real past. But if you really study history you'll find that this term slave and slavery, it applied exclusively, right? In the latter part of, we could say the 20th century to we black people, especially here in the Americas and the Caribbean. The people before that were the Slav, Slavic people, right? And the Slavic people and even slavery in Africa has a lot to do with the Arab slave trade. And in this particular article, they highlight his Imperial Majesty. We scroll down here through this particular article, right? And it says right here, it says, eight decades after slavery had was abolished by Imperial degree, Decree by Emperor Haile Selassie in 1942. This is how the memory of slavery is preserved in Ethiopia as fragments passed down by grandparents. Now, when His Majesty abolished slavery, I read the Ethiopian documents. This is something that's called, right? Let's see if we have this right here. Now, this is the next part of the article here. We're about to get to that right there. Let me see if we have this other part of the article. No, we just selectively took a couple of um, snapshots of some of the points. So we'll have that as a placeholder right there, right? So they had given... You know, um, right, they had actually spoke to somebody who, a woman in her 50s, right, she's too young to have seen people being sold in the market, but she was told, she was what told, so it's how people are retelling and spinning history. His Majesty and the Imperial de Decree, right, even from before that was against what's known as Fandia. The term, this term doesn't appear in any of the articles. Fandia, right? Fandia, Fandia. Right? I think we recall that word correctly, but we'll go into a more, you know, study video, ones and ones and no on other subject matters where we'll, you know, assemble as much evidence and like receipts and, you know, um, actually even take a screenshot of His Majesty, the autobiography where he speaks about and other Ethiopian documents, Fandia. Fandia was the slave trade. The slave trade, the Ottoman Turks. Nobody's talking about the Ottoman Turks. Nobody's talking about the Islamic and the Arab slave trade in the Horn of Africa, right? And the devastation that took place and also how the slave trade of the so-called white man, the Americans and the English, right? And the Western Gentiles, Western white nations, that basically was a jump off. They jumped off from the Islamic and the Arab slave trade and even terminologies, 
You know what I mean? And modalities were adopted from the Islamic and the Arab slave trade and also distortion of words and, and terminologies. I'd like to touch on that. And we don't find that ones and ones are bringing this aspect of the truth to light. But this woman right here, she's passing on stories that were told about the so-called slave trade by older relatives. But we know that behind the slave trade, that was going on in Ethiopia that was called Fandia. They often would talk about the word Badia. Badia is a term like the Arabic term um, Ebed, Abd, 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 and Ebed, Ebed, Abd, like you say Abdullah, right? Some would tell you Abdullah is servant of God. Isn't it also slave of God? But isn't that a high thing to be a servant of God or a slave of God? You, you're, but they use that term. The Arabs use that term like Abed, Ebed, usually against black people in the same way that later day Ethiopians, where the terminology, right, became distorted because of what was going on in the political horn of Africa region, especially with the Ottoman Turks, right? Nobody talks about the Ottoman Turks, right? And that's a lot to do with even what would happen later on, right, in that East Africa, East Ethiopia, Ethiopia, Arabia region of the world, especially with Palestine later on, right? And the Balfour Declaration, all this kind of comes out of the Ottoman Turks, right? The biblical Hittites, just to put that on the demon right there. So she's basically, that she heard different stories. She says, someone named Zerface, Zerface, right? She says that she was told about the trade by older relatives, right? She said, I've heard different stories. Slave owners own entire household as slaves and would sell whole families to buyers, including children, right? Then they say eight decades after slavery was abolished by imperial decree by Emperor Haile Selassie in 1942, this is how the memory of slavery is preserved in Ethiopia. As fragments pass, get this, as what? As fragments passed down by grandparents. But what about the actual history? What about the real history? See, education is the key, right? And we're not denying, right, that there were some evil and wicked Ethiopians who did things that were against even their own faith and culture and religion. Right and belief system. We we know this happens. We we have this in the Bible with the Israelites. Are you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Right. But it says histories of the countries gloss over slavery, and the subject rarely surfaces in public discourse. That's interesting. This is Ethiopia today, right? That's what we talk about: slavery and pseudo slaves. Right? Because the first thing that when we hear the word slaves, right, over here in the Americas and the Caribbean, we know what we mean by slaves and slavery, the original meaning of it. Now, what about what occurred and what has been happening in Ethiopia, right? What we have in Ethiopia or had in Ethiopia was the Arab, the Islamic and the Arab slave trade. No one is speaking about that. And this was called the Fandia. Fandia was when they would kidnap. They would kidnap my right, Ethiopians or those who were in the territory, right, that we can call and that is known politically as Ethiopia. They would kidnap people and then sell them even to like Arabia, right, or even as far as India, right, or, or Syria or to the north, right, and even into Turkey and the Ottoman Turks. Once again, the Ottoman Turks, right? Because it's important to understand the Ottoman Turks connection with the Islamic movements, politically speaking, in the East Africa and even into Africa of how the Arab slave trade entered into Africa, right? And was the slavery that was taken over Right by the English, the British, and the Europeans, the French, and all the rest of them, how they took over and they learned. It was almost like a business, right? Almost like a business. So the Western white 
nations basically hostilely took over this particular business and then would start to read those profits that would lead to the history of our ancestors over the past 400 years, for one to put it into a, a, a true context. But what about Ethiopia? Well, when we talk about Ethiopia, what are we really dealing with? Right? Are we really dealing with slavery in the terms that people would make you believe? I asked this question based on that title. Remember the title of this particular um, article right here? Right? Yeah, this is what we had said to some. We said, um, what, after what happens to we black people right, of the West, now everybody else is talking about slavery too claiming they were slaves, blah, blah, blah. Now, even this picture in the article, right? We could bring up the article, but we just hold that picture there. Let's go to this picture in the article. This particular picture in the article, it says liberating enslaved people in Ethiopia circa 1930 to 1940. I want you to check. Liberating enslaved people. These were people who were victims of kidnapping, right? Right? that was taking citizens and people from different tribes, right? But whoever they could capture out of Ethiopia into further parts of the Horn, into Arabia, and into other slave markets, the North, right? To the East, right? Um, not so much to the West. They went into the West because that the West was Africa, right? But the Horn of Africa was right there. So we had the Fandia. This is what talking about abolishing slavery. But what we had within Ethiopia, and this is something that needs to be, um, you, know, you know, this article really shows that education is the key, right? Education is the key. If you had money, you had slaves, right? Now, who was it in this particular article that says this right here? There is one of the people they interview. And they say this right here, right? They say, um, right? Yeah, yeah, they say this right here. Let, let me get the part where he says, even though they are kind of somewhat moderate on what his majesty did, right? Because you have to remember that there were other forces outside of Ethiopia that were being backed even by ones like Mussolini the fascists, right? Certain white nations that wanted to conquer Ethiopia, right? Who were Christians, sometimes they lend support, right? Against Christian Ethiopia to others in that Horn of Africa region and, and Arabia region, right? To try to undermine, right? Ethiopia's ancient Judaic and, and, and Davidic and Solomonic and ancient Christian culture. Right? So we have to understand that the war of this battle hasn't ended in the past, right? but it continues right? even to this you know, very day. It continues to this very day. Um, let me see if I can find the person that says this in this article right here. Let me find on page um, if you had money, right? you had slaves. But what about if you had money, you have employees? Right, right. If you have money, you have employees. If you have money, it says slavery. Okay, slavery was everywhere. Says somebody named Ahmed. That's kind of interesting because even that name shows. Well, how do we get the Ahmeds right in Ethiopia? We have to understand that yes, the first followers of Muhammad, according to history and tradition, came into Ethiopia, and they said leave Ethiopia alone. So in the time of Muhammad, the prophet. Right, it was said that Muhammad the prophet told his people, Don't do what they later on would do. And part of what many of them did was participate in this kidnapping and slave trade. And we don't understand how this has also affected. But what we're talking about in an article like this is okay, after it already had affected people in Ethiopia and trying to put the blame on, say, Ethiopia. My, while this was pressure from the outside and other Christian nations, like the Europeans, the white nations were playing hypocrisy, because notice how they would get in bed. The Christian nations basically got in bed with the Arab slave enslaving African nations. 
You see how all that work out? But we only talk about, oh, look how many, you know, look what they look what the white people did, the British and the Americans, you know, did to black people. Well, yes. But then where did he get that from? Right? What's the origin of that? Right? Then they try to tell us, well, slavery was always going no. War and captivity was always going on. Slavery, right, is a unique institution of it's a peculiar institution of the twentieth origin in we could say roughly um actually goes a little bit earlier to the early centuries right we could say almost a thousand years or so now that we've had this particular institution but it's 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 um it basically it matured in its wickedness over the past 400 years so this one named Ahmed says slavery was everywhere it was the backbone of labor it was a source of everything it was not only landlords and the court of the emperor keeping slaves but also rich peasants if you had money you had them so what they basically did was kind of twist around this idea they kind of twist around this particular idea and they made up that kind of title there. They make it like a quote, but it's not actually, according to this, you know, a a quote, right? So ending of the slave trade, right? Especially the slave trade, right? That was, was, was almost like crack. You remember what they did to the, the Chinese where they brought the opium and they created it in India and so they wouldn't have that far to ship it to Hong Kong and to China? The same thing they did with Ethiopia, right, and the Arab slave trade, right? So on one level, you could say, well, if one had money, they had slaves, or if one had money, you have employees. I want you to consider that for a moment. See, we call it, for example, people go to their jobs, even over here, they're getting paid. They can quit this job. They can go elsewhere, right? Right, they're getting paid. Now we're not talking about their wages. Nothing that every job pays well. No, every job don't pay well. So we're talking about better labor practices. I mean, let's talk about better labor practices. If we're talking about slavery, see the institution of slavery as we know it, right, from the experience of our ancestors here, right? The Beta Israel here in the Americas and the Caribbean, they was not getting paid for that. It was not like they could quit their job and say, I'm going to go to so-and-so, master so-and-so's plantation. No, you couldn't do nothing like that, right? So let's point out the ace card is what his majesty did. But his majesty's best efforts, right, were also being hampered, right, by outside forces. It's like over here in America, right, over here in the Western Gentile world, right, even when Right, the black population was able to increase, they still brought over, right, even more and more. <laughs> you know, like when the the Indian, the native, the Native American Indian, he had this um saying about how, you know, the white man he kept coming and coming and coming, you know, like all these boats just kept coming. You know, like, like, where was he coming from? There were so many of him coming. Even when a lot of them had came already, even more of them kept coming. So they always could reinforce, right? While for us who were brought over here, right, against our will, by force, right, under, under false pretenses, because some Africans try to tell us that, well, they didn't even know it was going to be this bad, but yet they were a part of that particular business. Now, when we're talking about Ethiopia, we got to get into this barrier, the barrier, the barrier point, right? The barrier question, because that's not, you know, that's not the full, full, right, of, um, of what we're speaking about here. You know what I'm saying? So we say in the Ethiopia context, right, uh, translation and words are being lost and used in translation like over here, over here, right? It says abolition came slowly, the result of, quote, external and internal reality, says Achman. The first big step came in 1923 when Haile Selassie signed an accord promising to end slavery to gain admittance to the League of Nations, although the practice was not stamped out entirely. Right? Well, no, it's 1923, 
right? Now, in 1923, it was Rastafari. Just put that on the record there. It was Rastafari, not Haile Selassie. He was not on the throne. He was heir apparent to the throne. He was Ras, plenty potentiary, but he was not on the throne in 1923. Let's just point this out for the record. This is how we're pointing to this because we're saying that though there's some things that are correct in this article, there are other things that are skewed. If you don't know, you'll read it, and if it reads well to you, you'll be like, oh, that must be true, because read, no. They just put you in a spell, right? And you don't really know what the words spell, right? That Hala Selassie, right, was not at that time. We have Rastafari. It's very important to understand this, right? Because when it says in the 1930s, See, it's in 1930 when Rastafari was anointed and crowned, right, and seated upon the throne of great King David in Ethiopia's Davidic Solomonic throne. So let's understand the Black Messiah aspect. So Benito Mussolini and fascism, right, it's another form of so-called white supremacy. Basically, he used the issue, right, of slavery, which we get to find out they were supporting, right, Mussolini, the fascists, the Roman Catholic Church. Notice something where the Islamo-fascists, they will do a lot of things, but they don't do things against the Catholic Church. Have you noticed that? That they'll kill Christians and all this everywhere, but they don't do this against Catholics. H hold on, hold on, hold on, okay, okay, okay. In 1930, Rastafari was anointed and coronated Haile Selassie I upon that throne of David there. I point that out because, see, you have to overstand the external and the internal realities. So Benito Mussolini, the fascists, the, the papacy, you know, Mystery Babylon, they used that issue of Fandia. Now, Fandia was the slave trade, right? Fandia, the slave trade. And the slave trade in that region was run, right, by the so-called Arabs and the Islamic, you know, Arabs of that particular time, right, that particular Horn of Africa region, right, and we should understand, right, the connections of that, right, with the Benito Mussolini. Benito Mussolini, he used, right, the Arabs and the Islamo issue to go against the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. See, this is how deep it goes. You would think that, oh, the Christian will support the Christian. You see what I'm saying? Well, the anti-Christian is not going to support Christ and his kingly character. Let, let's overstand that, <laughs> you know? You know, I mean, maybe with lip service and words, but in reality, right, they use the issue of the fondia. Now, let's bring this out. Well, actually, let's just do this right here. We put it on pause for a moment, but no, let's just go through with this right here. And let me see if this otherwise very good dictionary can bring, you know, can bring this this up right here. Let me see if I recall the proper spelling of this word. Fun, you know, see, fun, the, uh, let's see right here. Let me, let me go right here. Fun, the, uh, fun. Right, fun, the, uh, okay, it's on this way, so I can't see the full, the full screen. All right, let's see right here. Let's see, go like this. Yeah, there we go, fun, dia. There we go, fun, dia. Fun, dia. Fun, dia. All right, okay, fun, dia. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's the dung. All right, okay, that's one word there. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, my bad, my bad right there. Fondia, fondia. That's basically like animal manure, like we say, BS, so to speak, right there. But the word here is the uh, fengai, fengai, baria fengai. Let me see whether this has it here, fengai, my fengai. It's an interesting root. Let me just look at just getting some of the linguistics of it all right here. But this is just an opening video to this particular subject matter right here. And as a first, let's see.
Okay, there we go. Fen guy. Fen guy. Right? Fen guy. So we have, it's from Fenegale. Fenegale means to overthrow. To overthrow or overturn. Fenegale, the root of this particular word right here, person who sells slaves. Right? That's that, that we could say that Islamo Arab influence historically. Right within the Horn of Africa. And this is what one was speaks about in the article about the abolition, right, of the so-called slave trade within Ethiopia. I would like to show you this just to go into details of what was going on. Right? So we had the very same thing that was going on elsewhere, wholesale was being battled against, but it was something that had to even be more affirmatively stamped out because this was going on like in border territories and areas right but it was having an effect because these ones how can we say you no know, one so see money talks right like money this whole idea about the love of money right it's not saying that money itself is bad right but people will do things for money and now you have an outside influence and this is what the thing was called we speak about slavery in Ethiopia or selling of slaves and this business of it, the fen guy, fen guy, fen guy, fenegale, fenegale, right? Then we have fen gala, fen gala to be unsteady. Then we have baria, baria, fen guy or fen guy, right? Then we also have fen gala. Let's go right here and bring this one up. Fingala. Just like to show this particular word because people talk about this body of thing, but not getting into the the real root of where this word that actually means servant. The word doesn't mean slave, like the word abed, ebed, abed, right? Within the Hebrew and even in the Arabic, it doesn't mean right, it doesn't mean slave either. But people have superimposed that meaning, right? That meaning on ones whom they forced into hard servitude. Okay, Fingela. No, Fingela is not there. Let's just check the web right here. Fingela. Fingela. Right? Hello. No, it doesn't bring it out. Don't bring it out right here, okay? We're looking at some... Okay, let's actually bring up this word right here. This is Abyssinica. Very interesting and a very good software right here. You can see it has some words, but the word that we actually are looking at right here is this, right? We had to actually pause the video, get our dictionary, and here you're seeing the word right here. Let's zoom this in nice and large. Right, hopefully we'll take a screenshot of this. There we go. All right, so we have fenegale, 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 overthrew. Verb transitive, over, overturn. Fengala, 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 unsteady. Fengai, that's what I was looking at right there. Fengai and baria, fengai, baria, fengai, right? Or selling of slaves or slave trader. Then the practice itself is fingella. And you notice when I went to the word fingella, right? We had the root fenegala is there, but it had the word fengai, right? But when we went to fingella, fingella was not there, right? As in baria fingella, like right? slave trading. But notice the last word there, the verb intransitive, tefenegale, tefenegale, was overthrown overturned i want you to put this together right here since we're showing you just briefly here that yes there is this quote slave problem in ethiopia and with its past and its history because they are denying where this whole thing got turned upside down and twisted 
and this has to do with that period of time we can call it the ottoman turk the islamic you know where islam and the slave trade the arab slave trade came together in the horn of africa right couple of maybe 100 years after the death of the prophet of islam let's put that right there because he said not to you know not to touch or harm the Ethiopians. He said to leave Ethiopia alone, but this is exactly what they did not do. You know what I mean? We talk about the Christians and the Antichrist. We talk about, you know, the followers of the prophet Muhammad who came to Ethiopia and then others who have come in his name and you can judge the tree by the fruit, right? So I wanted to show this word nice and large right here, here, here. And then right there, okay, that's some here, right? But here, right? Notice his master says this. But now, this is as regent plenty potentiary as Rastafari. So actually, it's Rastafari that abolish slavery. That's that's a whole video right there. I have to get into that. That it, how it's Rastafari, right? That abolish slavery, right? And here is the evidence of documentation. But now, since we accepted responsibility for the fears of government as regent, plenty potentiary of the Ethiopian realm, we followed on the foundation laid as regards the liberation of slaves by the three kings whose names have been mentioned above. And let it be known by proclamation on the 22nd of Megabi, 1916 which equals the 31st of march 1924. now remember the article said 1923 and said halislasi here we have rastafari this is prior to 1930 the coronation and that revelation of that new name that in ethiopia slaves were no longer to be sold or purchased right now this is the proclamation was issued shortly before the region's visit visit to europe in 1924 in Panghurst, that's the bottom part right there, right? It says, we promoted an ordinance by which people, right? By which people, right? Here we go right here, by which people were to be punished, you see, who in future were found to be selling or purchasing slaves and by which slaves were to go free who had come by way of purchase or capture prior to the proclamation by way of purchase or ca capture. They was to go free. At Addis Ababa and other regions, offices and courts was, were set up by which the proclamation and ordinance were to be enforced. For this work, we recruited an advisor from England, Mr. De Halper, as judges and secretaries were appointed, and the entire work of administration progressively improved very greatly. Many slaves were set free. Their number was above 100,000. So there's no small thing, especially, remember in America, they had to fight a whole civil war to stop it, because some were in favor of it as their bread and butter, and others were as zealously against it, right? And even then, we still, after the Civil War and Reconstruction 1865, right, we still have lingering remnants because we recognize the institutionality of it. So this was never part of the Ethiopian, Judaic, Solomonic, Davidic, this was never part of our system of things. This is something that had crept in, right, and kind of poisoned our system. And sunlight, they say, is the best um, what, disinfectant, so to speak. You know what I mean? By exposing this. This is why we're going into this vlog right here, just on this particular matter right here, right? The number of those set free each year is to be found in the register of the League of Nations at Geneva. This is also another reason, right, why the Antichrist, Mussolini, Benito Mussolini, and others, right, black and white devils, right, fought against the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. This is why, this is why we had historically what we had with the fascist invasion of Ethiopia to stop this sort of progress, right? 
and then we can go on you know you can read on a little bit more so this is in um which chapter was this one of the earlier chapters of the autobiography of his majesty and it's it's well okay it's, it's chapter 14 about our efforts to free the slaves and the progressive improvement year by year in the struggle for their liberation right and what needs to be pointed to right it was outside forces exploiting we could say the openness of the country exploiting the openness of the country and kidnapping enslaving and selling people right ethiopian people we can say right outside you know to the arab world to to as far as all over the place right not to even that's a whole other video because we have other evidence on that and the evidence is there so we call this one right here slavery right and pseudo slaves ethiopia in denial about the arab slave trade right is in denial this is part of the history historically the ottoman turk period just pointing that out once again right here because I have to give um due diligence right so when we're talking about this right the quintessential slave the enslavement of the beta israel this is something totally apart. This is like the Holocaust, right? They said the Holocaust is what happened there to the European Jews. We say this slavery thing will happen to us here to beta Israel, right? To we, the black Jews. Do other people go through some things similar? Yes, something similar. But we do not want people to confuse, you know, the real with the pseudo, right? So we smell the real slavery and pseudo slaves, right but it was the same ones that were behind right we could say the slavery that led to what happened to our people were trying the same thing with the lion of the tribe of judah right they were trying the same thing with the lion of the tribe of judah this is a very interesting article go look it up brothers and sisters right many feel the ethiopia's slave owning traditions look look stop pause on that pause on that Right. Well, what had the pause on that? See what's being crept into as though this was instead of this was this was Ethiopia being affected, right, with what was going on on the open boards. You have to remember that, you know, this white man that came and started to carve up these artificial borders and then give everybody passports and all these kind of things in order to travel from one one place. He says, "Oh, this is a border here." The, the, and he said, this is a border, yeah, because he put a sign there and said, this is the border, you know? They said, this has lasted the last, into the last century, do not align with the country's modern image of itself. But one's have to get to the root of it. But one reason is because of the latter-day Arab and Islamic involvement in Ethiopia, right? That they might not address this, but historically speaking, right? It is the real, it's at the roots of this particular matter. Right. So if you had money, you had slaves. But what about if you had money? Right. You had employees. See, what's being confused right, is the terminology barrier. We need to touch on the term barrier. And along the term barrier, right, we like to touch on the term ebed, ebed, abed, ebed, right, in Arabic, ebed, barrier, right, in the Amharic and ebed, right. We had did a little quick, um, um, translation exercise, right? And in the Hebrew, we have Abadim, right? Or some might say Avadim, Avadim, Abadim, which is often interpreted as slaves, really servants, right? Then we have Obadim, and then we have Obadim, Obadim, right? The Obadim, right, are employees. Think about that for a moment, are workers. Right of workers, so are we speaking about working practices, right? Servants and working practices, or are we speaking about the slave trade, the enslavement, and as a point of reference, what happened to we, the black people of the world, here in these here Americas and the Caribbean over the past 400 years? There is nothing like it, right? This here is our we could say 
black beta Israel Holocaust right here. So it's important, right, that we distinguish between slavery, right, and between pseudo slaves, right, slavery and pseudo slavery, where other this word is being used, right, to identify other things that will be more properly identified by other words. So they're confusing people, putting people on the spell of words, right? Because servants and employees might feel like slaves, but it's a big difference, right? Whether you have a choice, whether you can go from here to there, or whether you have no choice about it, whether you can move up within that society, right? There's the ancient, you know, capture, people go to war, and one one tribe, you know, beats the other tribe, and that other tribe comes and they work for them for a while, you know, and then after a while, they even become one bigger tribe together. There, there's something there. That's why when it talks about abolishing slavery, right? Abolishing the slave trade, and true, even some nobles and others get involved in this practice because, you know, when something makes money, a lot of people would get involved with it. This is why even to this very day, because of them kind of gaslighting the truth of Haile Selassie, even in Ethiopia and elsewhere, is the reason why even today, many ones and ones are very confused and in a state of denial right, about, well, what's going on in Ethiopia, you know what I mean, what's going on in Ethiopia, right, what is going on in Ethiopia, so right here, that's the part of the article that needs, you know, Mussolini used that propaganda of a civilizing mission, right, while we've got to find out that actually Mussolini, right, ironically, was behind, and the fascist was behind, a lot of that Horn of Africa slave trade, you know, the Fen guy, you know, Fen Fengala that was going on at that particular, you know, at that particular time right there, you know, and then these other aspects dealing with like this term Baria, right? Baria in the Bible is the same word that David says that he says in a you know, you know, Xavier Baria name. He says he is a servant of Xavier of God. See, it's the same way they have this duality they use with the term Abed, Ebed, Abed, the word in the Arabic similar to Aved in the Hebrew, right? It's like how they say Kushi. Kushi means Ethiopian, Kushi. Right, but how in the east and in Israel, the state of Israel, by some races, they use Kushi as the N word. We touched on that in the previous um V log, right there, there, there. Now, this particular picture, right, of these ones being liberated is during the time of Kedemon we have the Selassie, these ones being liberated right here, right? That's from the 1930s to the 1940s. But yes, my brothers and sisters, yes. The king of kings, right? Free the slaves. It's ongoing, right? The battle goes on from day to day because the wicked won't give up. Therefore, we must kadima, 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 press forward, forward ever, backward never. Shalom, chavarim, shalom.